with this video i am starting a new course covering entire companies act and in this course i will share my knowledge about the company's law which i have acquired during last 3 decades starting with the word companies act so even before we go into the details you must be aware of that the name of the act may be a short title or may be a long title right so just understand the title title of the act this may be a short title or this may be a long title friends you must have your notebook and pen ready and keep on taking the notes whatever i am writing then that is going to be your ultimate reference material so short title example is already here the companies act then what is a long title take example the sick industrial company sick industrial companies a special provisions act quite a long title the sick industrial companies a special provisions act and example of short title this is already here the companies act so what is the impact when the title is short or long any act which is having the short title the law is exhaustive the law is exhaustive while the act which is having the long title that is applicable only in a specific situation that is not generally applicable right now as far as the word companies act is concerned this act deals with every aspect of the company since incorporation up to winding up and dissolution everything is covered under this law only so whether you talk about the promoters or what type of company or how to incorporate a company then how to raise the share capital how to borrow how much to borrow and who will manage the company every question that you may have in relation to a company you will find answer under this act exhaustive law right then when this will be applicable now for the applicability of this law what you have to understand that this will be applicable only to a company only to a company so it is already covered under this law then this is this is applicable only in a specific situation so first of all for the applicability of this law the entity should be a company under the companies act number 2 this should be engaged in an industrial activity right what is industrial that we, that can be discussed in that law only this is not the subject matter for discussion here so for applicability that should be an industrial company so requirement number 1 it is a company number 2 it is an industrial company number 3 this is sick company now what is called a sick company or what is called a potentially sick company that is already defined under that law right and this act becomes applicable if this is a company industrial company and it is sick and not all the provisions so that company not entirely governed by that law only special provisions so not all the provisions of that act are applicable in every situation 
there are very specific provisions given under that act which become applicable if the if the act is applicable so there is a difference so if your question can be if it is an sick industrial company whether it is governed by this law or this law friends this will be only special provisions other provisions will be from the companies act 2013 only right so whenever there is a short title law or a long title law first of all you have to understand the applicability so companies act is having a short title that's why the law is exhaustive okay so we can have number of examples but this is good enough to understand the in the beginning that the, this is the exhaustive law dealing with the company and here i have already told you that since incorporation up to winding up and dissolution now the winding up and dissolution these words are used interchangeably which is absolutely incorrect winding up is the process of realization of assets and settlement of liabilities and through the process of winding up you may take the company to dissolution or you may revive the company of course it is a theory that once the company is in winding up somebody will revive but practically or rather legally it is possible that a company under winding up is revived dissolution is one particular event by which the legal existence of the company comes to end right so winding up is the process and during the process of winding up company is very well in existence dissolution is one particular event by which the existence of company comes to end thereafter company does not exist that's why i'm using the term winding up and dissolution these are not interchangeable words so this is only about the title okay now we'll talk about what is the object of the act this is something very interesting or you can say what is the preamble of the act so when you open the act your very first line that talks about preamble or object of the act without understanding the preamble understanding of law is little difficult okay so i'll just show you in the printed document what is the object here see here what is given this says a bill so this is not the bill actually this is an act to consolidate and amend the law relating to companies so here i can write that an act to consolidate and amend the law relating to companies so whatever is written here the same thing i have done on the board right so i have replaced only one word so there i had taken it from the another document so that this is the act when it was introduced in the parliament that was bill but now it is an act so this is an act to consolidate and amend the law relating to companies now let us understand this in detail what is being consolidated and what is the amendment and the law is applicable to companies right i'll explain one by one first of all consolidate consolidate means what prior to this act 2013 there was companies act 1956 prior to that there were companies act 1913 prior to that there was companies act of 1888 right and when this act was applicable there were number of notifications circulars clarifications issued under that so here were number of 
notifications clarifications lots of rules many many things were there so understanding of that law becomes difficult at a certain point of time because this was in existence for almost 60 years almost not exactly and during that time circumstances keep on changing regularly evolution never stops that's why the amendment in the law also never stops law is always required to be amended to meet with the current requirements so that's why number of notifications clarifications delegations etc were done so actually by reading the companies act 1956 understanding the company law was difficult unless somebody had thorough knowledge about that so idea behind this act that we consolidate all these into one document and that should be as per the current requirement that should be capable of governing the entities or the companies in the current situation that is what has been consolidated under this law consolidate so this is an this is an act to consolidate and amend why amendment because companies act 1956 was prepared keeping in mind the circumstances prevailing at that point of time and it was being governed or the Companies Act 1956 was being implemented, was in force through the notification, through the amendments, etc. And ultimately, a lot of confusion was there. To avoid all the further confusions, all those provisions have been amended as per the, pro as per the circumstances prevailing now for better transparency, for better governance. Because ultimately, company is an entity where public money gets involved. So that is why the need for amendment and consolidation was there. So this is an act to consolidate and amend the law. Now it is relating to companies. What is the meaning of the term companies? Where does the act apply? So detail we will discuss in section 1. But right now you have to understand what this is saying. Because this is the law relating to companies. The word companies. What is the meaning of the term company? The term company, this is defined under section 2, subsection 20. This is defined under section 2, subsection 20. I will show you that in the document. Then we will write it on the board. See here, the word company. Now, this says company means a company incorporated under this act or under any previous company law. So, a company, it means a company. Incorporated. Under this act, or under any previous company law, right? So I have noted down it on the board. So that we can work on that. So see here. What is mentioned? So this is saying. <coughs> it means. This first word itself. Is the exhaustive thing. Had it been that it includes. Then the meaning would have been completely different. When we say companies act, so first of all, what is the meaning of the term company? So company means, it doesn't say company includes this also. Exhaustive meaning, the term company. So company means a company incorporated. 
it is created under law only that's why it is called a body corporate under this act this act means companies act 9 2013 or under any previous company law so any previous previous company law you understand so primarily it is understood that previous company law was companies act 1956 but when we use the word any any means what any means what so companies act 1956 companies act 1913 companies act 1888 and there were different company laws for jammu and kashmir different company law for arunachal and nagaland and all those have been consolidated into one law now. right so when we say any so any means any company law how many companies act 1956 companies act 1913 companies act 1888 companies act for jammu kashmir companies act for arunachal pradesh and nagaland and any other provision that was in existence all of them have been consolidated into one law <coughs> so under any previous company law now you understand one thing that when we say previous so this was also companies act so it is not saying companies act only for at the national level so even the regional company laws have been consolidated into this now the another question is very important question that you have to understand incorporated under this act means the a body corporate can be referred as a company only if it has been incorporated in india what about the companies incorporated outside india companies act right so this said this is an act to consolidate amend the law relating to companies company is this what about the legal entities which are incorporated outside india so commonly we call them foreign companies right but what is the applicability of the act applicability of the act to the foreign company is limited and that we will discuss when we talk about section 1 okay here you just have to understand that this act is meant for all types of companies which are incorporated under the companies act 2013 or under the previous company laws a company incorporated outside india whether that will be referred as a company at all for the purpose of this act or not that will not be referred as a company under the companies act a company incorporated outside india is a foreign company that is a body corporate and the provisions of the act can become applicable to a foreign company only and only if that company is having a place of business in india now the next question if a foreign company is having a place of business in india whether the whole act becomes applicable answer is no only chapter 22 specific provisions section 379 up to 393 those are applicable to the foreign company so limited applicability to the foreign companies having a place of business in india so when we talk about foreign companies we'll discuss in detail when the provisions become applicable and what are the compliances to be done by a company incorporated outside india whether the entire act is applicable or limited provisions are applicable so i've already given you hint that only limited provisions are applicable if a company has been incorporated outside india then what is called what a place of business that is also a defined term so lots and lots of explanations are there in the companies act but it is if you understand that well then this is a learning for the lifetime so i welcome you to continue with me for learning the entire company law see you in the next video thank you